Well, I think Joy had it right. Almost half of the base of the Republican Party showing up for this caucus tonight voted against Donald Trump. Think about that. I mean, this is the most famous Republican. He's the guy who, you know, basically built the modern Republican Party, the MAGA Republican Party that Democrats are running against. And half the people in that party didn't vote for Donald Trump. So I think that is telling. It tells you the weakness of Donald Trump and also the opportunity for Democrats. The fundraising numbers came out today. It's Joe Biden, 97 million taken in in Q4. 117 million on hand. His team is outpacing what the Obama campaign did in 2011. So at the end, exactly this period in time, but in 2011, 97% are grassroots donations. I've heard, oh, well, that's, you know, Hunter Biden's friends in Ukraine or in China that are sending that money over. No, it's regular people that want to support Joe Biden for president. Um, and if you look at the real clear politics average, uh, Donald Trump is up by one percentage point now. Um, in the average of the polls. So it doesn't seem that bad within the margin of error. It's going to be close, but the Biden campaign has a lot to be proud of. I'm not sure what's it going to take for Jessica Talva to leave Fox News, but I don't understand why she keeps throwing pearl to swine. What I mean by that is why you keep giving facts to people who are not concerned with anything factual. The idea that Joe Biden outraised Donald Trump and raised $97 million in the fourth quarter to have $114 million on hand means nothing to them, especially that it came from grassroots donors because all they'll do is continue to tout these false polls and not looking at something as accurate or almost accurate as real clear politics, where it says there's really, we're in a, a dead heat as it pertains to this presidential election between Biden and Trump. But that's not the narrative that Fox needs. That's not the narrative that the Republican Party and America's public is listening to. This idea that something big happening last night in Iowa because Donald Trump won the or the caucus deal is another part of that myth, a part of that lie. Apparently, there's there's from what we're hearing from the Iowa Republican Party, right, the Iowa GOP, there's going to be a, a somewhat low turnout for this caucus. They're, they're sort of projecting 130,000. The idea that something big happened when only 110,000 people participated in the entire state of Iowa in the caucus, which is the lowest performing caucus since 2000. 23 years ago, you have to go back 23 years to find a primary or a caucus in Iowa that had this low of performance. And the sad part about that is Iowa has had steady population growth since before 2000 and still less people participated. 110,000 people in Iowa participated. That's less than a neighborhood of West End and Upper West, uh, the Upper West Side of Manhattan, which has like 209,000 people. Nothing changed after Iowa's victory. They'll tell you 50% or 51% for Trump. Those are percentages meant to dazzle you. That's all they're meant to do. If you take a real look at what happened, because the primary process and the caucus process is a race for delegates. In order to become the rep Republican nominee, a candidate needs 2,429 delegates. Iowa dispersed 40 delegates. Guess what? Donald Trump didn't get 40 delegates last night. He only got 20. DeSantis got eight. And Nikki Haley got seven. Vivek got two. The idea that anything has changed is all to fool you who are not truly paying attention. I'm Mundell Robinson. Don't be fooled by percentages when the real numbers say something completely different. Peace.